with that, now let's now uh, pray and then invite our speaker. Father Lord, we pray that again this afternoon will be as impactful as yesterday's breakfast and yesterday, uh, today's service. I pray that our time here together will not be wasted. Speak to our hearts and let each of us commit to move to the next level in our finances. We pray for our speaker, Clayton Lord. You say, him, oh God, and help him to deliver this message to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Put your hand together for Clayton, who is also a member of our committee. Thank you. Praise the Lord. And I'm going. You know, when they are round tables, eh? you don't get to feel like uh, there are so many people in the room. But when it's a class setup, like what you're having, you look so many. Um, thank you very much, Pastor, for this opportunity just to even have some time and speak after a very a great man of God who spoke in the morning and yesterday. I was, uh, how many were you yesterday? Hey, okay. Let me, let me go like pastor. How many were not here yesterday? <laughs> oh, big number was not here. <laughs> so if you listen to the speaker yesterday here, I actually asked him, will I manage to speak after you? Mimi Sijui. But I'm sure God's grace is going to be sufficient and you're going to learn from each other. Um, I was given a title to speak about um, how to start and run viable business. And... I told pastor I do not want to put up presentations and uh, put up, uh, you know, all those things that people put up. I want us to have a discussion. And I would really be engaging you so that you can be able to, in a very, in about uh, 45, uh, 30 to 45 minutes, to go through how to start a business and run a viable business. Many of us have started businesses. So I will... I will try and engage you in this way. I'll be asking questions. I allow you to discuss about it. Then we'll have one or two or three people. Just raise hands. We share and we learn from each other. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is that okay? I am going to talk to Do you want to run a viable business? Do you want to run a viable business? And remember, a business even from uh, having a rabbit having that one chicken that is giving you one egg, it's a humble beginning. Were well, we not told that in the morning? So everyone has a humble beginning, right? So for me today, in fact, when I listened to the speaker today, I said, we are not even starting businesses. We are going to do humble beginnings. All right? So how do we, do, how do we start our humble beginnings? That is my question. It's not me, it is you. <laughs> So how do we start our humble beginnings? I'd probably start by asking, how many people are running businesses? Like you already have a running business, it's there, it's working. Raise it up high. Ah, good. So how many are not running businesses? Wangapi on attack ones are humble beginnings. Hey, we have a good number, good. So um, how do we do our humble beginnings? Any idea you want to throw up? For those who've started businesses, Mutinda, just short answer, short answer, <laughs> short answer. Uh, for me, it's basically you run through the idea. You, you have to see the business. You have to see the vision of the business in your mind. You have to think about it, analyze it. Then you do a study about it. You can either Google, you can ask people about it. But first is to grow the idea in your mind so that you can put a plan about But it starts in the mind. Thank you. It starts in the mind. You just have that idea. Yes, Brother Rogers. There's this question you asked about the business. Um, there's this person who's keeping like 30 chickens. I believe Ajajibu Kama and the answer is Okay. I repeat the question. Atakamo kuna 30 chicken. That's a business. How many are having businesses? <laughs> Rogers wanted to feel included. 
So we've included him. So if you're having 30 chicken, please raise your hand. It's a business. Kumbi ata pasta kona good sapa. Amekata kusema. Good. So even that's a business, yeah? And those are humble beginnings. It is so humble that you do not even want to consider it a business. Unajificha nayo. But what we are doing today, we are trying to start from those humble beginnings. How do we get from those 30 chicken, the two goats that you're having, Pastor Mesema Nongezea, a cow, in the next few weeks, yeah? How do you increase from your 30 to your 50 to your 100 to a whole structure like this is, that is uh, keeping your chicken? Mutina has said, it starts from an idea, all right? So when you start that idea, how do you start from there? Any other answer that someone wants to throw up? How do you start a business? Yes. This is our vice chairman eh, for CBF. Eh? Uh, I think uh, for you to start a business, that business must be created to fix a problem. So you must identify what problem is existing and your business you are starting is actually to fix that problem. Hey, you need answer, Imenda. Ilienda wapi? Naikarudi. Yeah, I cannot even emphasize on that. You need to identify a business. And for me, what I'll now give you my answer. All right, you have to do what you call conduct a market research. So today you want to keep uh, what to a channel chickens are Roger Skwanza. I want to hear from any other person what we are Nafunika. So I'll go to him. What kind of business do you think of starting? Keeping, he's saying keeping milk goats. All right. Any other person? That's one. I'll come back to that. Any other business? Okay. We are feeling shy. So one of the things when you're starting a business, like for him, he said he wants to keep milk goats. The thing that you have to identify is what solution are you giving to the market? to your society, to your community, all right? Today I can say I want to set up, um, what do I see people doing, M-Pesa business. You know M-Pesa business? Can you walk 100 steps without facing an M-Pesa business? Serious, 100 steps, can you? You will walk 100 steps, M-Pesa, 100 steps, M-Pesa, true or false? Can you start an M-Pesa business where another M-Pesa business is? Yes, you can, right? Is it a viable business? <laughs> is it a viable business? There's a yes and there's a no. And I'm happy about that. And that's what we are here to identify. So when you're starting a, a, um, a business, or you're thinking about starting a business, one of the things that you need to be able to look at, what solution are you offering to the market, the community around you, your environment, and your neighbors. Someone will ask me, why should I think about that? Today, if you are offering a solution to your neighbor, your marketplace, or someone, you'll have people lining up to come and tap into your solution. I talk about M-Pesa because M-Pesa, when it came into, into being uh, about uh, 14, 15 years back, what did they do? They identified there's a problem. How many people remember how we used to send money to our parents and people in the village? How are we sending our money? Poster. Then there was another one. Uneka kwa basi. Unaambi, ukienda malifrani upatia ipesa nani? Then there was a problem there. Fraudsters started coming into the whole chain, right? So people are losing money. Sindio? So what did Safaricom identify? A problem. They identified a need, and they plugged that need. Today, what is M-Pesa? What is M-Pesa today? Is it even a business? I think it's even like a government. Today, if M-Pesa stops for 10 minutes in the evening when you're in the supermarket, what happens? Full chaos. All of you are shouting, hey, Sasa, M-Pesa. Is that a viable business? Will it ever stop? So, does it make sense looking at what you need to plug in? 
Now I go back. Do you still want to open your Mpesa 100 feet from the other person? <laughs> Do you still want to open your Mpesa 100 feet from the other person? You have, to, you have to look at what are you plugging into the solution. Remember, we are discussing about starting viable. It's not wrong to start next to 100 uh, feet from the other person, but is it going to be viable? Will you be there 100 days from that person. The other thing which we'll discuss later, is your money making going to be like this or is going to be like this and at some point like this? I will go to my second point. So the first one we said is doing what? Conducting market research. So you're able to go out there. Uh, just to mention, I will not really dig deep. Today we're just scratching the top. Then as we go by, there are other speakers will come after me and they'll also be able to dig into these things that I'm speaking about. But today we're just scratching at the top, get the idea, then we can be able to dig in. And if pastor allows, maybe he'll from another session again, we get more certificates. So we are going to conduct a market research. So you're able to understand your environment, you understand your market, not just uh, market, market who are you going to sell your services and products to, all right? Then we go to point number two, and here I'll spend some time on it. Point number two is to write a business plan. Now, this is the one of the hardest thing for any business person to write. Anyone who is starting a business, this is the hardest thing they'll ever put in place. How many have a business plan for their businesses? Hey, Asante, Asante, raise it high, raise it high. The hands really reduced, yeah? From business people to business plans. <laughs> so we've come from businesses to business plans to now. I hope at, uh, by the time I'm finishing, we'll not have any, any hands up, <laughs> yeah? So one of the very, very key things to have in place is what you call a business plan. What is a business plan? Any idea? Hey, why let me a business plan? <laughs> what is a business plan? <laughs> um, I think it's a... It's a roadmap or a sort of a compilation of strategies of what you're going to do so that you can become successful. Thank you. Any other thought? What is a business plan? I'll give you an example using his description. Today, I want to go to my Ushago. And my Ushago is Kakamega. What route will I follow? When I wake up in the morning, I will ask myself a couple of questions. I am going to Kakamega. How many roads go to Kakamega? How many roads go to Kakamega? Hey, I cannot talk Kakamega. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, but well, that guy is called like my father, who has read his hand, Mukabane. <laughs> my father is called like that. So, how many roads go to Kakamega? Huh? Amen. Muto mesema three. Direct routes. I don't like going to Mombasa to Kakamega. We are going to Kakamega. And we want to cover the shortest route to Kakamega. So someone has said three, right? So I will wake up and say, I'm going to Kakamega. First stop would be where? Nakuru. See? We are creating a business plan, eh? So first stop will be where? Second stop? So there's Kericho. Uh -huh. Or? Or Kapsabet. Or? Hey, Kunumta Mendel Doret. Okay, what's a trick, Eldoret? Which other route? Muhor. Okay, so let's let's stick with the Kapsabet, Kericho, and Eldoret. Eh? Hey, like you know Eldoret, why? Anyway, <laughs> what will be our third stop based on those three dynamics? There's Kisumu. So if you're going to go through Kericho, you're going to go to Kisumu. If you go through Kapsabet, which will be your other stop? Chavakali. Uh -huh. Then, if you're going to go through Eldoret, hapa kuna shida. Eldoret people, you'll come back to Kapsabet, or you'll go through Lukuyani on the other side, Webuye. So that business plan is already, it's already out, because is it making sense? We are going to Kakamega, but why are we going uh, 200 kilometers extra? So we come back to Kapsabet and Kisumu. So it is going to be our last stop now. Kakamega, right? 
You see my analogy? I want to make it very simple. Today, if I'm going to Wakamega, I'll try and get the shortest route there. Right? Because my focus is to go to Kakamega. What I'm going to do in Kakamega has not been established because probably I want to go sightseeing to Kakamega. But it will be more interesting if I go through Eldoret because I'll see more sites before I get to Kakamega. But my goal here is to reach to Kakamega. So my shortest route will be probably be uh, Nairobi, Nakuru, Kapsabet, Chavakali, Kakamega. That's about 360 kilometers, right? If you go through Kisumu, it will be about 400 and 20 kilometers, thereabout. So you have to draw a roadmap. And what you're talking about here today is creating a business plan is drawing that roadmap to where you're going. So first of all, we've identified we want to start a milk, goat, goat, goat milk business, right? So we want to start a goat milk business. That's what our business you want to do. We want to draw a roadmap. The first thing we'll be looking, what do I intend to do with the goat milk? So if you're starting a goat milk business, where, what do I do? You've mentioned the key thing by the way. It's not even goat for meat, it's milk, right? So we want to get milk from that goat. What do we intend to do with that milk? Am I doing it for uh, local consumption? Am I doing it for commercial consumption, whereby I have to take it to the, uh, my local, say probably my quick mat here? Or am I looking at doing it big time, where I'm taking it to various places. So you must have a bigger picture in place. All right? Remember, when you're starting a business, you're not starting a business for uh, selling to my neighbors here, ama my, my brother here, na muzia chicken moja, sema, ah, miatano. And the whole 500 is going to be consumed back into that business. We need to have a bigger picture whereby six months, one year, Three years, where am I supplying this goat milk? So we are starting with, how many do we start with? Two or one? We start with two. So our intention is to have how many goat milk uh, goats? Two. So we need to know what is the intention of that business. Am I selling it to the local consumption or am I selling it for large scale kind of consumption? Number two, where do you want to set up your business? So the, do you have a place to set up your business? So he's established a place. So we, when, in our business plan, we need to be able to come and say, where do I intend to set up my business? Now, here is a, a mix. In the current situation that we are currently living in, people set up their businesses in different places. If I just move away from the goat milk, uh, probably we look for trading uh, kind of uh, business. Uh, you're selling clothes, you're selling equipment, you're selling services as well, where do you intend to set it? Some people will set it online, other people will set it in their houses, and other people will open shops. So you need to identify how or how, how am I going to host, let me call it like that, how am I going to host my business? So you can either host it in how many ways? Three ways, all right? If you host it in your house, you can host it online, or you can open a shop. If you go to farming, you need to identify what kind of a farm do I need. If it's chicken, do I need to have a whole acre of land, or do I just need a plot, or do I just need a room in my house to set up a chicken uh, place that I can put them? If it's the goat, do I need, for my two goats, do I need a whole kiwanja because they need to graze around, or will I be able to put them in a room and get them feed to eat within that room? All right? So you need to establish where do you want to set it up. Are we together? Two copa moja? Good. The third thing we need to be able to look at is how do you intend to do your business? And by looking how you intend to do your business, we look at a couple of things. One, you can start a business whereby you're running it solo. Like, for example, I run my business, I would run it alone. Or number two, can I assume that you're running it together? I'm safe to assume like that, yeah. They can decide as a couple, they are running their business together. Hey, I did a mistake. My wife is sitting in this meeting. 
we run a business with her. <laughs> She's sitting somewhere at the back. She will wave later on. But so, for example, they are running their business as a couple. For me and my wife, we run our business together. So we put it. Or number three, you can go to another level and say, I want also to employ people. All right? See, we are starting a business. To make sure establish what we want to sell, right? And we've established where we want to start it. And we've also established how we are going to start it. So we're establishing how do we want to run it. Is it a solo business whereby where when you alpha and omega in that business? Or am I going to run it with my wife? Maybe I'm the alpha, she's the omega. Or she's the alpha, I'm the omega. Or are we doing it whereby we have to employ other people in that business? So you have to establish that. Please note, eh, we've not started the business. Sawa, sawa. How many have business plans? I need to see the business plans. When did the business plans disappeared? Mume ona amna business plan tena eh? How many are having business plans? Zimepotea. It's okay. We are going to get back them back. So we have established key things. We have established the business you want to do. We have established where we want to host it. And number three, we have established how do you want to run it. Now, we come to the most critical part of this business. How do we finance that business? How do you finance your business? How do you finance your business? So I'll throw it back to you. How do we finance our businesses? Because people have started businesses in here and people are intending to start businesses. How do we finance our business? You just throw up your hand, you say one or two words, then you put it down. Yes, sir. Getting a loan. Yeah. That is debt financing. Uh -huh. Loan from, from where? Bank. From bank, Zako. Friend. Yeah. You know that's a loan, yeah? Uh -huh. So loan, through a loan. What is the other way of uh, financing a business? Thru Savings. Grants. Grants. Grants and loans, we can put them together. Right? Uh, which other way can we finance our business? Investors. Uh -huh. So we have uh, how many loans, savings, investors? Sorry? Friends and families. I was actually waiting for that answer. Friends and families. I know most of the young people in the room... Eh? will get their financing of businesses from friends and families. True or false? True or false? So we can have our friends and families to finance us. That's a key way of financing our businesses. Then we can also start our business through loans and grants. Okay? And we can also get our business finance through investors. All right? And the other one we said through savings. So we have about four ways of financing our businesses. Now, all these four ways eh, have uh, advantages and disadvantages. I would probably touch on a few advantages on, uh, on uh, family and friends. One, when you borrow from your, or you go to your mother or your father to give you money for business, will they come for your neck? Will they come for your neck? I said mother and father. <laughs> I was key. <laughs> mother and father, will they come for your neck? When you go to the bank to finance your business, you've taken a loan. Will they come for your neck? When you go to a circle to finance your business, will they come for your neck? When you go to investors to finance your business, will they come for your neck? When you go to your savings to finance your business, will it come for your neck? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yes. I will tell you why. <laughs> if you don't run a viable business and you put your savings in there, what happens? Where are you? You are at negative, right? Has it come for your neck? So when you, when you take your savings to start a business, will it come for your neck? We are, we are there. People are still, yes, but they are going to change. So, in all these things, eh, there are 
advantages and disadvantages based on the mode of financing that you take to start a business. So as a business person or the business line that you've decided to take on, eh, you have to check what is the best way I can use to finance my business. We all remember our humble beginnings, right? Right? Hey, hello? Humble beginnings? Why are we in the service? Humble beginnings? So we are starting our humble beginnings. So in, at different levels, our humble beginnings might be 10,000 shillings, 100,000 shillings, 1 million shillings. Those are humble beginnings. Based on that, it can be able to tell you how do you finance your business, right? Now you understand why I have been able to give you that options. Because for me to be able to go get grants and uh, investors, eh, I might be looking at about 5 million and above for grants and investments. Are we clear? Because someone who's going to give me a grant to start my business, they have to look at what is my three-year, five-year, ten-year plan when they're plugging money into that business, right? If there's an investor who's coming to plug money into my business, they have to check what is my three-year, five-year, ten-year plan? What is my uh, revenues going to look like? And what is my, how my uh, profits going to grow before they put money into that business, all right? So we have to look at... Uh, what are you going to, what are you looking to, what kind of business are you doing and how do you intend to finance it? To meanza biashara mabadu? To kwa api? Tunata after pesa, zindi yo? Badu tu kwa kutu kwa api kwa? Tuna finance biashara yetu, yeah? So you need to see how do you need to finance your business, yeah? Now, after we financed our business, no, after we have looked at how we are going to finance our business, atujata after pesa badu, tuna tumeyandika apu. I will borrow my mother, nitenda kwa bank, nitenda after investors because my humble biddings are 5 million. I will go to grants, I'll go to World Bank, IMF to give me money. We also look at how are you going to go to the market? Go to the, going to the market, yeah? What we call go to market, yeah? And this by what we mean is how are you going to sell your products or services? If today I am starting a business and my business is to sell clothes, I have to look at uh, ways in which I'm going to sell my products. One, am I going to sell my products online? Or number two, am I going to sell my products by way of referrals? I go to my brother here and be like, now, now Zanga handbags, eh? so you can buy for your wife. Then you buy for your wife, eh? your wife like, yeah. Now you tell her to tell her friends to buy for her. Now, now you tell your friends to tell their friends to buy it for their friends. Then, after two months, I come back. Now, I'm selling handbags. Buy for your wife. You look at me like, bro, see, I bought one last month. Right? Like, no, no, you know, this is a new, uh, they call it a new stock. Eh? I have brought, me. it's better than the other one. In fact, it's going to cost you an extra 200 shillings. You're like, Okay, you buy. Now, tell your wife to tell her friends to buy for her friends. Now, tell your friends to tell her friends to buy the bags. By the time you're coming to the third circle, what has happened? Wait, <laughs> Someone tell me that has not happened to them. Those who try to sell bags. <laughs> yeah? Anyone has tried selling bags and uh, selling to a referral circle? Anyone? Shoes? Clothes? Okay. To Janzisha Biashara, we are still financing. So then you, uh, you go to that one, you probably that may not be the most uh, best way to sell clothes. But in some cases, it works. You also have to look if I'm doing through referrals, do I need to create a referral list so that I'm not having one person that I always buy and sell to that person and expect that person to? So you might have to create a referral list. For example, you say, anyone selling insurance here? Insurance. Ah, how does it work? <laughs> Referral lists. <laughs> Let us speak. <laughs> Tell us something about referral lists. <laughs> referral list is a sure business. Uh -huh. So when you get referrals, you are sure that one is a close. And how long does it take you if you have a proper referral list? To close the business. No, no, no. In terms of running you through. 
Okay, it's the shortest actually, because you see there are not so many. <laughs> yes. Good. So referral list is actually the best. Like she said, it can you can actually sell to so many because today if I come and sell to pastor here and I tell him, hey, refer me to someone, guess what? He knows the whole church. See, he knows the whole church. See, that is referral. He'll come and say, hey, Mununu insurance talk on any Will I ever run out of sins? Yeah? So you have to create um, a proper referral list that can be able to take you years. Because, because as you grow that one, eh, it also grows. All right? So you have to think about, are you going to do a referral business in the referral way? Or are you going to do hard sales? I, I, I see people who do Mali Kwa Mali. You've seen the Mali Kwa Mali guys? Those guys are hard sales people, yeah? Those ones are hardened by this sales business. There's, there's someone, I don't know if you say, Andrew, Gishimu, you're here. That's a sales expert. Yeah. So if you get to see such kind of people, they are hardened sales people. So those ones will go. So do you want to do your, go to hook your milk hard? You know, I am selling goat milk. Utadunua. Lita moja. Sawa. Pesa. Hard sales. All right? That's what I'm calling hard sales. Yeah? Or you're going to employ sales people. Remember we, our discussion about how we're going to run our business? Are you going to employ people? Remember that, yeah? So this is when you come to sales people. Are you going to put sales people in place for you to be able to, to run it? Then, now, we have uh, established our business, right? We have known where we are setting it up. We know where we, what we intend to do. Are we going to do solo? Um, uh, we employ staff. We have known how we're going to finance our business. We've known our go-to-market uh, plan. We've uh, put it in place. And then you're going to the other thing that is called financial projections. When you start a business, you have to put in place what you call financial projections. So you have to put But you have to put in place a financial projection. How am I going to use the money that I've been able to put into this business for it to sustain my business, for it to be viable. So I have to draw financial projections. If I put in 100 shillings in, uh, or say 1,000 shillings, how much has I got? 7,000 shillings, thank you. So probably he needs 14,000 to be able to get his uh, uh, two goods. After getting his two goods, he needs to be able to know how they're going to feed. He needs to know how they're going to get uh, a veterinary services coming over for them. Then he needs to look, I am getting my milk. How much am I going to sell one liter of milk every day based on the number of liters they give? You've done your projections. How many liters does one give per day? Three liters. So if you have two, you have six liters, right? By the way, we are doing financial projections, right? So you have two goats, three liters per day, Six liters in a month, you're having how many liters? 180 liters. Right? We are at 180 liters, isn't you? We bought the, the goats at 14,000. Right? So, how much are we supposed to sell a liter of milk? There's something that we call break even, so that we can be able to say our milk has paid for the goat. Our milk has paid for the veterinary, and our milk has paid our labor cost that is going in. So those are what we call the financial projections. You have to see, if I bring this in, how much do I need to sell it over a period of time for me to break even at a certain point? So that, I can see it. Now I am starting to do what? Profits. Most of the time, what people do, they forget and they start selling, ah, by month one, I was making profits. If someone interests you in a business, then I tell you, month one, you'll see profits. Because you can investment that you put in there. How do you cost for that investment? How do you make profits in month one? Is it possible? For the people who run uh, businesses, is it possible to start making profit in month one? Hey, unless you know the hair. No hair is free. You just capture it and sell it. Yeah? I have seen... Um, People out here, they come and tell you, in this business, we assure you profits, returns within the first three months. 
and you look at them, you're like, how do you do your projection to give me returns within three months? I'm, I'm not going to trust the people who do agribusiness and uh, they're called what? Isos are kweka kwa nyumba nani? Greenhouse. I have seen some people who tell you within the first three months you start getting money back. Have you heard those people? They will be able some places. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know Hey, my brother. <laughs> we need to be wise. Yeah? Let's be wise. Yeah? Before you buy into something, go and do projections. And I think, Pastor, you need to create another session where you can do uh, business financial projections so that we can help all, our, all, other, all these people to be able to do projections so that you're able to see if something is, you're being sold air or you're being sold a viable business, all right? So you need to do your financial projections. That is the key aspect in any business. If you don't have your projections right, business is going to collapse in the next three months. I assure you, no projections, you collapse in three months. Go try it and start a business without proper projections in place. Then the last thing you're going to do is now we, we put what we call, what is our expansion plan? The speaker today morning talked about putting in place goals. Short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. These are able to help you to also be able to project your numbers and see how your business is going to grow from two goats to five goats to ten goats as you grow. That's how you're able to now project your business as you go, as you go by. All right? Are we together? To memorize a business plan. Are we ready to start a business? Are we ready? Hey, see you come out to ready. Are we ready to start a business? So uh, the remaining part of the of my presentation, yeah, is just now how to put those into into working, yeah. The most important thing when you're doing or when you want to start a business is to put the business plan in place. My brothers and sisters, I can tell you, if you don't have a business plan in place, you start a business like this, and they never take off. It's because you just think you wake up, ah, sineza fungua mandazi na niuze pale inje. And sure enough, you go buy the karai, buy the jiko, buy the mafuta, buy the unga, start mandazi. <laughs> Yeah, it has happened. Yeah, you've seen them outside your places. How long do they sustain themselves? Most of the time, they'll run for the first month, second month, third month. I have observed one outside my place. I no longer see that lady. business plan. However humble your beginning is, put a business place in business plan in place. Atai kiu ndogo aje. Just right. I will buy uh, three bundles of hunger. This in one week I need to. Just tell you a short story. There's a gentleman who used to work for us in our place uh, when we were putting up our house. After the construction, is like I did not want to go back into the construction and asked him, "What do you want to do?" Came, he told me, "Unona pale kwa stage kuna makanga wengi, and they come and uh, terminate there, and they want to buy lunch. Jioni uh, wanataka kukula." I'm like, okay, he's done his market research. So, siyako sawa. By the time he sat and realized, Gary's na geuka pale, now those people want to eat, he's done his market research. So, I'm like, so what are you planning? Naona nikuwe na pika chapati na mandazi na chai. I'm like, okay, good business. I asked him, uh, oh, so how, what's your plan? How do you plan to stand? I need that, uh, there's a, that key, mavuli, the big one. I need that mavuli, it's costing X amount. I need the uh, jiko, it's costing X amount. I'm like, okay. I sat down with him and I told him, let's go through the whole business. At some point, he thought I was being too hard on him because he was coming to me to finance his business. But I took him through the whole journey. I told him, no, I need to know where every little shilling is going to be going through in this business. And he went back for about three weeks. I kept chasing him back. Then he was ready and he had now put everything in place. He's like, now I have a proper plan. I even asked him, how many chapels will you be selling in a day to make sure you are one, paying for that space you'll be sitting in, you have your own money, you can pay your rent, and you can also be able to pay the person who's helping you. The boy worked out all the mathematics, and I was like, good. For him, 
he's not going to school so much so that you can tell him to go and write for your plan and come and present it. But that keeping him going and back to be able to put his plan in place really assisted him. He started with the Mavuli in front of somebody's shop. Four months later, he had taken the Kibanda that was, he was staying up on Bela Nauzia, Alichukoyo Kibanda. And he started now selling. And he employed and how many other people? Four. And this is a guy who was doing what Mtu Mkono Kwa Mjengo. Now, even the guys who are laughing at him around Mtu Mkono Uyu, they come and eat from his place. He ran that thing for over a year. But he got into other issues. No, he skipped from Nairobi. Akenda Ushago. But the whole idea of taking him, to even ask him, how many mandazis will you sell in a day? How many chapatis in a day? How many milk packets are you buying? Just to be able to show his numbers, was able to assist him to sustain himself, even pay for his rent, send money to his parents. And he's like, hey, I'm running a hole. It's doing very well. And he comes like, I'm doing very well in this business. It's doing very well. I'm like, slow, slow. I'm like, slow, slow. I'm like, slow, slow. Malizana naik wanza. Unfortunately, he goes into some issues and he, he left the city. But it was not a big uh, business like at uh, gym uh, buildings and everything, but that small Mandazi business was able to keep the boy in the city. All right, so you have to have a business plan in place. It might not be elaborate, it may not have big words and all those uh, my brother uses in his presentation, yeah, but having something in place assists in starting your business. So now we want to start our business. Still on a plan. Now we want to start our business. What do we need? First thing. What do you need first thing? We need money. See, that is capital. So who do we get capital from? I will leave that to you. You have to now get your capital. If you're going to self-fund yourself uh, from your savings, or you're going to get investors, going to get loans, or you're going to get donations. Now you start your business. The second thing is like you've already identified. That is the place that I'm going to start my business. You go, get that uh, location. If it's to pay for the rent, because now you have the money, you pay for that uh, place, you pay for the rent, you start the business. Then you go to number three. As you have paid for that place, because now you need people to know that you're starting a business there, you set up the structures. You put up, if you are having employees, you put them in place. You need to brand the place, you put the branding in place. You need to put the, if it's a shop, you need to put the shelving inside. You have money, remember, yeah? So you have borrowed money, you have taken from your savings and everything. You put that in place. Once that is done, so you're ready to start your business. But no, you're not yet ready to start your business. How many have registered their business with the registrar of uh, companies? Nilisema mikono zitaisha. Mikono zimeisha. So how many have uh, VAT certificates for their businesses? Uh -huh. How many have NHIF for their employees and their businesses? Mikono zaizdi kuisha. NSSF. <laughs> business license, I'm sure you all have. Now, we, we are Christians. And the Bible is very clear. Pay unto Caesar what belongs to? Tuwache kukula ushuru ya wenyewe. Stop hiding. Kulipa ushuru? Hey, kulipa ushuru? <laughs> Paying your taxes and doing all the government documentation is very important in running your business. Make sure you have that registration, Yabiashara. You know that paper? And if it's a business name, you have it in place. You get your KRA tax. Put it in place. You know, unfortunately, in our country, we are in a place whereby, Iserekali Natukula, see, that is the business people say, Iserekali Natukula, but as as born-again Christians, we need to do our due diligence to our government and government bodies. Let us pay whatever they are doing and pray for them to use that money as it is intended to be used. It's not yours. I, I am thinking a person who a person who is not uh, in Mepita, a person who is not uh, paying their taxes, are they paying their tithes? Are people who are not paying taxes paying tithes? Eh? Hakuna dhambi hapo katikati? Si unaibia mtu mngine? So if you are paying tithes, why can't you pay taxes? 
Or if you're paying taxes, why can't you pay tithes? Hapa ndi na inangaleze like wacha kuguza hapo. Iyo si area yako. We are doing viable business. And you are helping the government to assist you in doing your viable business. Alright? So let us ensure we register for all those things. We pay our taxes, we get our business licenses, we do our NSSF, our NHIF. We put them all in place. So that as you have your shop, when a city council person walks in and asks you, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. The moment you say hauna, there's something else that comes up. Tunakupeleka nani. Sindio? Then what comes up, tuneza kuongea. Alaf nini naingia? Nini naingia? Simzeme corruption too. Nini naingia? <laughs> Unona mali dhambi natokianga? But if you put all those things in place, I tell you, if any person comes to ask you a question and you have them in place, there is no room for you to get corrupted or corrupt someone so that they let you go. All right? Even if you're having that chicken farm, get all the right papers in place. The veterinary officers, when they come around and they're asking you questions, you have them in place. You don't give room for someone to, give, to get something to... Uh, to come something from you or to make you to corrupt people. All right? And then, finally, you need to open a bank account. Or you open a pay bill or find a way on how you're going to collect money. I'll tell you a reason for this. Most of us are aspiring to do business with big organizations. We are aspiring to do big business with big people. Then someone tells you, okay, okay, do you bring, bring, bring. Even going back to my previous point, let me have your papers. No, I can do all these things. But because you want to do with me and I, deal, I do all my uh, taxes and documentation properly, I'll tell you, give me your papers so that we can have this process clean. But what will happen? Uh, you know, I don't have a tax. No, now I don't have to nini, sir. You know, eh. like, okay, so how do you do business? Then I walk away from you because I'm like, you don't have documentation. Let me go look for someone who has the, the papers. Then I go look for someone who is not even a church member and I give giving the business because they have all their papers in place. Some of them, they'll have the papers, but they do not have a bank account. Yet, my business uh, processes do not allow me to pay you cash. I need to write you a check. I need to do a transfer to your account. Are you getting where I'm coming from? So when you have all these things in place, it allows you not to just deal small, small biasharas. You can also do what? Big business. Because big business requires you to have your papers in place. If you don't have them in place, it is very hard to cut from doing biashara yapa, ruai, kamulu. Money is there. Money is there. You do the business here, but because you've not looked at expanding it and doing it big time, we are dealing with not cash money. Problem number two of not having your bank account or your pay bill in place. When your money comes in in this pocket, you get to the house. Unambiwa we atuna pesa chakula. What do you do? Unapatiana. Umesha skile suru mta semanga alikula stock. Umesha skile yo. Unakula stock aji. How do you eat your stock? You see what you've done. You go with your cash money where? And if you ask for something or you even marked down the road, what happens? See stocky menda. But if your money is in your pay bill or is in your account, do you have those risks? It's to see cool stock. Finally, create a plan whereby you are able to pay yourself a salary from your business. All right? Whether it's a salary or it's a commission or it's something. Pay yourself from your business. To the coolest doctor, Fadali. Because one day, umechukua, 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 needs keep growing and coming. And you still keep churning money away from your pocket. You end up doing what? Kukula stock. All right? Are we empowered? Are we empowered? By then, you Maliza. I am done. Is there a question? <laughs> yeah. So just before I take questions, yeah, that is how to 
we've just touched on how to start a business. We have not even started running it. Pastor, to run the current business, how much we save it for next time? We save it for next time. So can I come back and say how we can run a business? Do I come back? Yes. Uh, before I come back to run a business, I want to give you a, a short story. My wife and I, Ruth, she's in the room. You can just stand and wave at them. Hey, <laughs> Tafuta. So Ruth is sitting behind there. We've been married for a couple of years, almost going to 10. And we run a business together. Um, she's not an active participant in the business. I'm the active one. Eh? But we have done quite a number of businesses. So personally, I have engaged myself in so many biasharas, eh? from construction to transport to all those things. I have not settled Kabisa. I will go. I will go. And I will, I will do all those business plans. So Kikuja Kwa computer, well, this and another one, eh? they have those things. I put my calculations, I put my Excel sheets and everything. But I'll just speak on one of the business that I'm actively running right now. I'm currently developing what you call marketing, IT marketing solutions. And the kind of solutions I build with my team eh, is uh, what you call loyalty programs. I don't know if you know about loyalty programs. I think some of you are using it, by the way. Yeah. Anyone who has an Ola tag, you have your key. I show them. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who has an Ola, fuels at Ola or something. So if you go to Ola and you have something like this, eh? I hope Naona, right? Something like this. My company is the one that does that solution, whereby you fuel and earn points. All right? So that's the business I run. How did I start? I started into this journey way back in about 2014, 2015. Then I was working for an organization. I've worked for a couple of organizations. My, my longest time I worked in a bank, uh, banking, uh, bank in Nairobi, yeah? one of those banks. And I got a lot of my experience from working there on how to run financial systems and how to run uh, IT-based products and all those. So as I worked, and I also went to work in one of one institution that went down, and I'm sure all of you had that card in your pocket. Nani alikuwa nakumat global card? Sina pesa yenyu. Sina pesa yenyu. I don't have your money. I don't have your money. I don't have your money. So I developed that, that card, eh? and I think it had almost a million users on it. So good products in the market. And I said... Why do I keep doing this for other people? And I sat there and I said, okay, I am working for other people, but yet I was planning on how to do my own, uh, my own products. So I walked out. I didn't work out. I'm still consulting for other people. I sit in other people's offices and all that. But I started a business. And I said, this, I want to run it for the very long time. 2014, nothing. It was an idea. 2015, I registered a company. I put Everything, anything you can think about, I put it in place. It's supposed to be an IT, IT company, yeah? Mm. Guess what? It became a construction company. Apple <laughs> <laughs> business plan, ilipiga wapi? Ilienda left. <laughs> hey, kafanya kazi, I made money yeah, from my construction, yeah? I did a lot of construction. 2016, ni kona way. He construction, eh? Yeah? Is not, is not doing it. So I switched a little bit. So I was doing construction, but I was constructing very specific kind of uh, um, structures, specifically for what we call server rooms. And they're very specific. They have a lot of uh, specifications that you have to adhere to. So I moved into that business. Then I did it for some time. Then I'm like, Niko construction, like in Niko IT. Remember it was a IT company, yeah? It went into construction. It came to IT construction. By the time it came to about 2017, I was like, no, I need to put my focus in this. So I talked to other people and I told them, look, I'm looking to do this thing. What do you think? Now, how not to do a business? Let me show me how to do a business. I sat somewhere for a whole year and I learned how not to do a... That is a story for another day. But <laughs> that's, a, but that's a whole topic, how not to do a business. I talked to some gentlemen and I told them, I want to do this. They're like, yeah, yeah, you start it, we'll join you. I talked to them then. Very many fell off the, the road. 
So I talked to two and I told them, I want to go for this business. I'm going to go for the first customer. Are you on board with this? And they said, affirm, yes. And I told them, let's put pen to paper that you're on this. Went for the first customer, we went for the presentation with them. The customer said, no, we are not ready for this. Went to the second, not ready for this business. Third one, by the time you're getting to the fourth one, to call like, are we sure you want to run this Biashara? You know, even you question your, your decisions, eh? Like, ni, ni, ni kweli. And my wife is looking at me, is like, yeah, you just go through it. I'm like, we shall, we will make it. You know, and like, we will make it. 2020 comes. No, 2019, uh, some person I was consulting for told me, I'm looking for this solution. And I'm like, are you a godsend? I do those solutions. So I agreed with them, and I did the solutions for them. But that is just now. What customer? After how many years? So, Mona Mali Nimeka. So, Biashara can start either in one month one or in year two. So, we start the customer, we start, and business start coming in. 2020 comes in. I travel out of the country. I'm going to uh, facilitate uh, another client as well out there. Corona hits when I'm out there. Kukila Mali Kumefungwa Nikoapi. Then I come back. Now you have to struggles of coming back. We were the first people who were struggling to get back. Not the people run away from the country and you are running back. So we ran back. Nikapigwa quarantine ya 21 days. na corona. So after that, uh, after the quarantine and everything, I came back and I'm doing my work from the house. All of a sudden, remember what the, the speaker said in the morning. Some people have prospered in this corona like this. So I said, I need to establish a niche in this market. And the niche then was, all of you are sitting in your houses, you're not doing anything. I'm Wendy Komaduka, shops are closing. So what is the next place people are buying stuff? Online. So I switched my business and said, I'm going to do online, uh, build solution for online, uh, online solutions for people, for e-commerce. So that's where we switched to. And believe you me, within the first three months of trying to do that, we had customers now starting to come our way. Because everyone now needs a solution. You go to this person, they're like, no, I need a solution. No, I need a solution. And that's where we, our company now started picking up. And we've now been having those customers coming in every month, every... You just talk to someone, they're like, oh, we are thinking about it. In some cases, eh, there are customers who come to you and you're like, does this really stand to the ideals that I want to do? You ask those, yourself those questions, you're like, these are not my kind of customers. You walk away from them. But God has been very uh, gracious to us. We have been doing this business for a while. So some of the things here I'm saying, eh, I'm not talking them from the flip chart. No, it's things that we've gone through. And what we try, I'm, I'm not yet there. I'm not yet a billionaire. I'm looking to be a billionaire. My company is uh, running a few millions eh, uh, annual revenue, see profits, revenue. The kind of business we do, you don't talk about profits. <laughs> <laughs> you can build a solution, it dies, eh? so you have to pay back the customer. So not profits, but we have some revenues that you're running over a period of time. But what I'm saying is starting a business is not a one-day affair. You are there and you're like, umesikia ni mesema story ya nini? Uko? Mashamba. There are no quail eggs in business. If you sold quail eggs and you made money, hallelujah. Amen. But there's no quail eggs in business. You have to to sit in there, stick out, and do everything as it's supposed to be done. All right? There are no shortcuts. Anyone who cheats you with shortcuts into starting a business, they're lying to you. Your business is not going to be too sustainable. It will just pick up and... It will pick up and do what? You have to stick it out and do the business. All right? Thank you very much. I'm really appreciated this time. I am happy about having gone through this period with you. Yeah? So I think we want to go to one quick session before we close. Um, uh, I also have to stay here and lead this session. So you have to listen to me again. But there's a question for this gentleman. Uh, okay, as we are discussing about sources of funds, mm -hmm. I was thinking, there's this person who has a, you have an idea, mm -hmm. you know who wants this, mm -hmm. you know where to get it. So you talk to this person, he gives you go ahead, you outsource, you deliver, you get paid. There was mm -hmm. no grand, there was no capital, there was no how do you term that? Because some may have these kind of ideas and they can do it's a business. So there are some businesses, especially in uh, supplies and all that, yeah? That you are able to get uh, a credit line. 
whereby you can come and tell him I want he tells you he wants uh, 100 books but he's not paying you until you supply but he's the one who's selling those 100 books and he knows you so he's believing on your word that you're going to supply and pay him and him you're believing he's when you supply he's going to pay you so what happens you've used a line of credit from him to supply and it gives you a profit in there but is it really giving you capital yes and no Maybe the margins you're making from that business is not enough to sustain you to start a business, but it is able to keep you going. But because you have a good line of credit from him, you can actually get other customers as you grow your capital so that next time you you just pay him and take from him. And some businesses, that's how they are run. You don't necessarily need to have money in your pocket before you start a business. You just need what you call a line of credit. And that's also a form of financing. You can get a line of credit from the person who's supplying you with the goods, or you can go to a bank and gives you a line of credit. It's not necessarily a loan, but it can give you a letter that you can present to Rogers here, and Rogers knows, oh, by the way, this bank has taken the liability to pay me in case Mutinda does not pay me. So I can supply Mutinda. But when Mutinda gets paid, immediately the bank pushes him to do what? pay Rogers. So those are also some ways of financing your business. But they are very hard. Alright? And they are not uh, sustainable as well. Alright? I also do consulting on uh, money and all that. So Neza Ongia. Neza Jiuza. See, I can sell. Yeah, I can sell. Me sina nini, sina desk. So I can sell to them. <laughs> <laughs> we share. I mean, somebody share the profit with him. <laughs> Any other question? Because we started with the questions at the beginning, yeah? I am not putting questions at the end, but you can just allow two. The people will shoot their hands up very fast. One, two, three, four. No questions. Thank you for no questions. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> Rogers has a question. <laughs> yes, one nice was if you. Amen. Maybe uh, uh, just a suggestion, Pastor. Um, we see on TV this Shamba Shape Up. And I, I think that there are so many of us here who have started this uh, small, small farming, like the, the cuckoos have said, the, the, the goats, the cows, whatever, this side. I don't know. We, 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 we need to ask the, the Bwana, Bwana Vice Chair kindly to get those people to come to church we see how we are going to benefit out of that. Because I, I watch it on TV on Sundays, and I think it's something that can really bless so many people. Thank you. That's, that's a very good suggestion. Even away from Shamba Shape Up, that's actually one on agribusiness side. Yeah, We can also have on other sectors whereby you can have someone coming and saying, for example, people who are doing baking, can we have someone come and talk to them about what is baking? How can they do that happening? And this is just the beginning. I sit in the CBF committee, so I can speak with authority on that. We are looking to ensure that what we are starting today is going to go many years, not just to be talks here, but we are going to create groups whereby you can say, groups who are doing manufacturing, can we get someone who is a guru in manufacturing to come and speak to those guys? So that they can move from uh, you know, the small-scale manufacturing. Long-time plan to have a factory by yourselves. All right? So that's what we are looking at. And if you stick to what we have started today, I kid you not, we are going places. Not me alone, not pastor alone, not pastor alone, but all of us. All right? So we want to move to the next session. And the assistant vice chair will assist me with this one. So I have been uh, given direction, yeah? So we are going to split into groups. So brace yourself, Kidogo, yeah? We are going to do a very quick group uh, uh, session so that we move on with this. Now, you've heard what question um, Rogers has asked. How do we get someone who is into agribusiness, Shamba Shape Up, to come and talk to guys who are in agribusiness? For example, I have interest in agriculture, 
But is it what I want to do right now? No. Do I want to sit in a chamber shape up a discussion? Eh, no. But Rogers and uh, the guy who is doing, wants to do a goat, something there, they would want to listen to those guys, right? And it would be best if we put them in small groups. And these small groups, eh, we want to see, Rogers comes and says, I have 30 chicken. Is it chicken ni meanza, zilikuwa miambili, nikona 30 peke yake. 70 zilenda wapi, zilikufa. Ama tulikula. Kula stock. Mekula <laughs> stock. <laughs> yeah. 170, we want to, in those small groups, we want people to be sharing their real life experiences. We want to learn from each other. You've heard what I have had to share, right? But I want to hear what my brother is doing in their small group, what, and all that, so that we can grow each other. And now from those some small groups, we want to get also ideas. They're coming, you're like, oh, we want someone to speak to us about this. We quickly arrange for that and we bring that person. We want someone to speak to this. We want someone to help us in how to do our business plans. Proper business plans, eh? And you have an idea about what it is. But there's a second step to it. Now actualizing it. We need to get someone to come in and do what? Help you actualize that business plan. Yes, my sister has a question. All right, praise Jesus. Amen. Now, Clayton, now that... You've uh, guziered something to do with online marketing. Eh? There are these things, uh, youths, wamependa sana, online writing and what have you. And uh, kuna iyo ya kupata account, and maybe you don't know how to get your own account. You can also employ others, isn't it? So can you have a session maybe of training youths or maybe whoever person is interested in the same on how to go about it? You see, ideas are coming up. You know, you, you understand what I'm talking about? So can we get ready to get to our groups? So I want to split you in these categories. Yeah? One group I'm going to call it consultancy services. All right? People come Mimi. Mimi. Remember Mimi? Hey, when you're going insurance, when you're going financial consulting, uh, what is the other one? Give him a mic. He can also assist me. <laughs> financial consulting and all those things, yeah? People who are in those kind of soft services, as we call them, right? Yes. Yes, so those ones who can be able to do insurance, business, uh, which is the other one? Uh, banking. Banking. Uh, taxi, that's also a service. So we've tried to... Uh, uh, this was my uh, broad thinking. Huh? Uh, for service consultancy, here we're talking about people who are providing a service uh, that uh, essentially somebody might be wanting to do something, but now just wants to listen to you like you want to talk to Pastor Tang uh, Elder Tangi. So just to get that idea that it can shape whatever that you want to do. Just giving you an advice. It is broad on various aspects, not limited to one. So people who are broader in understanding and they can give you that advice. So people give services on a wide range of things. So that is what we are calling service consultancy. Yeah. So now, like what is she has asked, yeah, would also fall into that category. We'd have someone who knows an idea about that. They can sit together and we would do that. Teaching is also a service. You know those tuitions? That's a service, yeah. So they'll sit into that group. Hmm. Then the other group. Manufacturing. Yes. So then we have uh, manufacturing. Yeah. This involves value addition. Those who are producing soap, they are, you manufacture something, yeah, from your home or from uh, somewhere that you have. If you have a company. Then we have another group that is called agribusiness and farming. You're following with me, yeah? We have general supplies and trade. That's the fourth group, yeah? Then we have a service industry. Uh, that involves uh, taxis, insurance, agent. insurance agents. You know those kind of service that you have? Uh, you can go, you're not selling something, yeah? But it's a service that you're offering, yeah? You'll fall into that group, yeah? Of uh, service, yeah? Then we have startups. Auko shua ni nini unafanya? Ulikuwa construction, ukenda IT. Kama mimi, eh? You can... <laughs> we'll put in one group. So we're going to have about six groups, yeah? Just think about what group you want to join and where you fall, eh? So we have, we'll have one group in this corner, here, another group in the middle, then another group at the end, and then likewise, one, two, three, six groups, on these sides, all right? 
we'll, I'm going to run through them again. Then, as you listen, eh, Mwanze ku, Kusonga, yeah? then we'll uh, give you directions as you go into those groups. So we have a uh, service industry, consultants, all right? If we run a consultancy, uh, financial, banking, those kind of services, yeah? Then you have manufacturing, so you do some early ad value addition, and uh, publishing, just publishing you, uh, you books. You make and something, that. Yeah? producing something. It's a process that you... Then we have agribusiness and farming, general supplies and trade, service. Service is the same Billy, eh? So you think about service, eh? and you get confused, just come and ask, we'll direct you. Then we have startups. All right? Are we ready to move?